your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back to the Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee hosting an Eco School Seminar. The aim to encourage more schools to get involved in the promotion of a healthy environment and a healthy economy. Megan Shepard reports. Primary and high school students on Grand Bahama leading the charge in protecting the environment and helping to implement practices that will prevent future degradation of the earth. Member of the Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee, Olethea Gardner, says that she is proud to boast that of the 33 registered eco schools in the country, five are on Grand Bahama, and three of the 14 green flag schools in the country are on this island. This is the time where you get to take the stance, where you get to lead the organization. So with the program, there are three main areas of focus. There were energy, waste, and water. And Eco Schools Bahamas added on a few more topics. So there was biodiversity, there's litter, there's the school grounds. And now, of course, because we've all gone through what we have gone through and we have all come out so much stronger on the other side, they're now focusing strongly on climate change and the marine and coast areas. So with the Eco Schools program, it's again to organize and to direct the student activities. Kevin Clinton of the Bahamas Reef Environment Educational Foundation commending Grand Bahama for leading the charge in the country when it comes to eco schools. He is also commending the Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee for engaging students in fun action and responsible learning tactics to do their part in creating a sustainable world. There are over 50 thousand schools worldwide in 68 countries and over 19.5 million students. Not 19,000, 19.5 million students. Locally here in the Bahamas we have 33 schools um, spanning anywhere from Grand Bahama, Abaco, Eleuthera, Exuma, New Providence and soon to be there's a school in Long Island that's just about finishing up their registration as we speak. There are 14 green flag schools in the Bahamas. This green flag is recognized globally as a symbol of excellence and environmental education and practice. He adds that he spoke with international partners that have reached out in assisting the Bahamas post-Hurricane Dorian. Out of that was born a campaign called the Children for Children campaign where the children in all 68 countries are now showing, and, and some of you saw the, the video the, um, this week, showing their empathy, their support for the students in Grand Bahama and Abaco. Not only are they doing that, they're also trying to, to generate some funds to help replace things that were lost. The other part of that program is, a, is, a, is, a, is an educational program trying to expand knowledge in terms of disaster risk reduction and from a brief perspective resilient blue bahamas highlights climate change the reality of climate change now nakira Wilshgum, also of the committee says that they want to continue to promote a public awareness and reinforcement of the importance of a clean environment we must not get content that we're so clean. As I started going down these deserted streets, as I started just seeing every effort that sanitation services made, today they're, they're picking up the litter, tomorrow the litter's back on the streets, I realized that we could not get complacent in our cleanness. And so um, the, the whole committee was birthed in 2006 to recognize that we have to continue to promote this activism. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Local volunteers coming to the aid of Grand Bahamians in their time of need. Educator Ricardo Major and other members of the GB Cycling Association volunteering their services to assist residents with home cleanup and repairs post-Hurricane Dorian. Doors to cut out the sheep rock. Um, uh, we've gotten ladder, we've gotten generator uh, in order to be able to do that. As a matter of fact, right now, 
we have a fully functional trailer that's able to go into any community um, without electricity and we're able to function, meaning, you know, persons can come there, borrow tools off the trailer if they're right in the community, borrow the tools to work with and then return them the same day. So we're able to go into communities, work um, with a bit of fully functioning uh, kind of a workshop type thing. He says they're now partnering with schools and youth organizations in hopes to engage a lot of young persons to give back at a young age. Our focus and purpose now is trying to see how we can um, engage a lot of our young people, first of all, in them getting a true awareness of um, the magnitude of devastation that is here uh, in Grand Bahama, and then also uh, assisting them because all of them are going to need community service hours, and then we're teaching them just to give back to the community. So once they understand that, and then hopefully they'll be able to uh, develop and pick up a trade um, in, in being able to do that. And this is from ranging from the, the basic roofing to uh, sheet rocking um, and then also just, just giving back in service. And now to our weekly Generation Y report. She is stepping into the literary world and she's encouraging others to join her. We caught up with this young writer at a local institution where she read her newest book to the students of that school. Italia Hall report. lived a little girl with smooth brown skin and a perfect head full of curls. Dominique Smith is a new Bahamian author. Her first book, Zoe's Beach Day, focuses on children knowing the importance of not littering. Now Dominique says coming out of high school, she never thought that she would become an author. But in 2018, she felt a spark. I always knew that I wanted to write something, but I always started and stopped. And I decided to take it take on a smaller project. Rather than writing a big adult novel or something, I decided to write a children's book, something short that I know that I could finish. And I also joined uh, the Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee. And one of the things that they spoke about was uh, littering, especially in schools, how they could reach little children so that they know not to litter. The book was officially completed in August of 2019, but she says there were some challenges as Hurricane Dorian threw a few things off track. All kinds of things were going wrong, and I would get extremely frustrated, and my mom would just be like, just take it easy, God's plan. Just see the positive in all things and see how you can turn it around and make it work to your advantage. So that's always what I tried to do. And after Dorian, I was actually surprised that person started messaging me on um, my social media pages asking for the book. So I was like, okay, you know, let me start pushing it a little bit more. And so far, the sales have been pretty okay. The young author says she believes that more Bahamian authors are needed in the country and adds that it opens so many doors once focused. Uh, you have the ability to network with a lot of persons. You get to meet other Bahamian authors. And uh, so far, since I've joined this community, I find it to be very welcoming and supportive. Um, persons like uh, Tiffany Meadows and Coral Pinder, they have reached out to me and they have offered um, support in whatever way that they can in terms of advice or whatever. Um, so far the experience has been excellent. I would have to say that it's a lot of hard work. And let's look at stories making news. Rumiko, what's coming up in sports? Well, the Hugh Campbell basketball tournament is officially underway in the nation's capital, and one of the top basketball teams in the country has decided that they're not taking part. Oh, wow. Stay with us. More on that while we return.